Today in the bunker, we're going to build a police station suitable for the wasteland. Much like the hospital that was our last build, uh, this kit came from the big box of kits. Uh, and it, of course, is also got some really scungy, dirty spots on it. So our first step is going to be to clean this off with some washing up liquid and a little bit of warm water, a little bit of sponge work. And once we get that done, we'll be able to start assembling. After a bit of washing up, uh, it cleans up pretty nicely. A little bit of residual gunk on there I couldn't get off, but that's fine. We're going to paint over it anyway. So I just kind of dry fit everything, sort of squeezed it together. I haven't glued it. I'm going to wait to glue it until I do all of the pieces on the inside for the windows because we want to put some screens or mesh in there. And it's easier to do it while the wall parts are separate. Also, the roof, I'm missing several pieces of this kit. Okay, first off, you notice that the, the light fixtures are gone, which is common. Uh, this piece of the chimney is gone, which is common, and we'll build that up out of something else, probably chipboard. Uh, the antenna array is gone, and, and the little mount, which is also common. And there are places you can buy uh, at least the lights and all of the antenna bits. I haven't found anybody that sells a replacement piece for the chimney, but you can get the top. But we're going to scratch build all that, and I'm going to use this, what used to be, a, I started out life as a wall anchor, I believe. We're going to use that as an antenna, and then that way there'll be a way to lift that off. And it's kind of reminiscent of the original antenna. It was a rod that came up with a couple of big loops on it. It was very 1930s. So, and then we've got a piece, I got a random 3D printed bit. Uh, another one of the miscast set that I'm going to glue on over this hole in the back. Make that some kind of vent or something. But Again, that's totally optional. You could use some screen there. You could use whatever. Um, I'm trying not to use too many 3D printed parts right now. For the light fixtures, we're going to use some pearls and some jewelry findings and some other things. So. One note about these old kits is sometimes you'll find them, there'll be glue residue or whatever, or maybe you've got parts from two separate kits um, that were made at different times with slightly different dimensions due to mold wear. Anyway, if they don't go together, if they're really super tight, you can just kind of file around these little nubs like I've done here, and then they'll go right together, and uh, they're easier to glue that way. One note about these windows uh, when you're doing them, they're indented into the building. And that makes it a lot easier to put like this sculpting mesh on there because you can put it on there and just bend it around the inset window and uh, glue it that way. And I just used some super glue and some baking soda for an instant set. So I added some sculpting mesh to the windows and then just some window mesh. I don't know how well that picks up on the camera to the windows on the door and then the, um, the transit, I think that is what that's called. Um, you could have used the same window screen on all of the windows. If that's all you have, that's fine, or vice versa. If you only have one kind of mesh, just use that. Alternatively, you could just board over a lot of this stuff. I wanted to give it kind of a fortified look. So we're gonna continue on with the rest of those windows and get ready to glue this together. When you glue the sides together, I find that on these square buildings, it sometimes helps to set the roof in place. Don't glue it, but uh, glue the wall seams, then glue the tabs together, all while that's in there. That'll help hold it kind of square and keep it um, of a size that it, the, the roof will fit back down in, hopefully, easily. You may have to file a little bit. I suspect I'll have to fit this slightly to get it to fit perfectly. But in the meantime, we're going to build a frame around the signage so we can do what we did with the hospital. We've glued on the antenna. I built up, I just used a piece of uh, chipboard and cut it in the middle so it would bend and then cut it to fit 
to make that L shape. It's not perfect, but it works. It'll be fine. I added a little bit of trim just to dress that up. We're going to put a cap on here with a exhaust pipe. And we've built our frame. I'm only just going to do on the ends around the signage. And we'll print out a sign and add that like we did on the hospital. So we're just about ready. We need to put this on a piece of chipboard for a base. And I will cut that out and then we'll hot glue it on. All right, I cut out. I just set this on the chipboard, traced around it, and very carefully cut out with my knife there, retractable knife. And I'm just going to hot glue this together. Once the hot glue gun heats up, I'll go in and put a dab at the corners, let that firm up, and then put a bead. Because this is big enough, I should be able to get the hot glue gun in there with not too much trouble. I was originally going to put a piece of plastic tubing up here like an exhaust thing, but then I realized that was too prone to break off when I tried to move it. Although, I don't know how that antenna is going to fare, but we'll see. Uh, so I made a, some trim around there just with some plastruck pieces. You could use chipboard, wood, whatever. Um, and then just took some of that window screen and glued that mesh down in there. Alright, so the craft beads I got, they're like little pearls, and they come in various sizes, and I picked two that were kind of a medium size. They should be about right for the globes on these lights. And I think what I'm going to do is cut some little pieces of tubing this, I'll put it in the camera where you can see it, this way, and they'll sit down in there like a cup. And then we'll glue um, one of the metal finials things to the bottom, and then we'll glue this to some panels we're going to make and put on there and we'll see how that works. After several attempts, finally to make those lights, I used some plastic tubing, that metal earring backer piece, and one of the medium-sized pearls and I just put them, strung that kind of on a wire and glued them together with super glue. And I'll cut the excess pieces off and then I just glued it into place, well, rather sloppily, where those two plug-in pieces are, that kind of fits in there, and I just super glued the mess out of it, as you can see. It made a horrendous mess. Don't do that. So we'll get that other one on there and get ready to prime it. One last bit of detailing I did. There's a obviously a hole where that wire comes out the top. I couldn't get very close to it to cut it off, so it wasn't quite flush. But I just put some PVA in there and kind of smoothed it over a little bit. And it won't be perfect, but it'll at least not look like such a huge gaping hole once we paint it. After priming, and what I did was my usual upside down black and then zenithal primed with gray, which even on terrain works pretty well. You get a lot of just natural shadowing, and uh, I find it pretty useful. So we're going to touch up. There's a couple of spots I missed. We'll touch those up and then uh, start putting some color on this. And to paint this, I'm just going to use my normal selection of various craft paints, whatever kind of looks good at the time. I'm going to use the gunmetal on uh, like the bars and the, the mesh, things like that. So let's get uh, that touched up and start putting some color on it. I had originally intended to paint this more of a dark gray, but it just looked kind of dull. So I ended up going with some tan. I just sponged that on. The key to remember is to sponge it directly, don't smear it. So we're going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to start picking out the windows and the door. And uh, then we'll get ready and put like uh, some wash on there and a little bit of dry brushing and try to really bring out some, some highlights. Now that everything's had time to dry, kind of firm up, I went ahead and made a little sign, which I've Mod Podged. I just printed that out on paper and used some Mod Podge to attach it to some chipboard, which I then Mod Podged on both sides. And now just dumped in the Mod Podge. All right, now that it's not in the Mod Podge anymore. Um, so once that dries completely, we're gonna go ahead and super glue that to that frame and we'll cover up that plastic fill there. Also, these windows that don't have the uh, screen in them. We're going to take and board them up and I went ahead and pre-cut 
a bunch of these little boards out of coffee stirs. They're about 32 millimeters, about an inch and a half. And I'm going to take these outside and spray paint them. We're going to put a black base coat on them and then we'll dry brush them up with gray and some tan and make them look like aged wood and then we'll just super glue them on. While the pieces, the boards for the windows are drying, I took the sign, which was fairly, you know, pretty much dry, and lightly sponged on some gray paint just to give it some aging. Um, you could dirty it up with some browns or whatever. I also, because the cardboard was kind of shiny uh, or bright on there, I just took a, um, a Sharpie and went around the edge and just blacked that out so that it wouldn't stand out against the, uh, the building. So what we're going to do is just take and super glue that into place. All right, that was a little bit fiddly because my super glue runs everywhere. But um, if you don't have super glue, you could PVA that on and it should be fine. Uh, I found that PVA with cardboard will have a pretty good grip on some of these pieces. I don't remember if I covered it earlier. If I did, then this will get edited out. But um, this started out gray, then we sponged on tan. Then I dry brushed white, which really brought out this texture that's molded in and gave it kind of a dark gray appearance anyway, which is sort of what I was going for. So that worked out pretty well. All right, so these are spray painted black. I let them dry. I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing on them, which I don't know that the camera is going to pick up very well, but it really brings out the wood grain on these. Okay, we'll do that with gray all over, and then we'll hit that with some tan. All right, after putting on a black base coat, dry brushing up with gray, and then hitting it with some tan, it makes a pretty convincing aged wood. Um, it really brings out that grain. If you, if you have some where the grain is a little reluctant to pop like that, just hit it with a wash, and that'll kind of make the, the grain rise, and you can dry brush it pretty easily. So let's get these cut out, and we'll start gluing them on. All right, you just kind of randomly glue them on there so it looks like they were very quickly boarded up. Um, you may want to go a little longer just to make sure you have sufficient area for that super glue to get a really good bond, but I think that'll work right there. And if they pop off, we'll just glue them back on or we'll replace them. Not a big, huge deal. So let's get the rest of those on and start to wrap this up. All right. Once you get all those pieces on there, if you have any little scraps left over, you can kind of glue them on that way. Just, you know, whatever looks good to you, however you think that they should be on there is fine. One thing I will point out, this building is big enough that I think you could do an interior and make some jail cells and all that stuff, and it would be pretty cool. Um, I generally don't do interiors for the buildings because I'm just trying to get these things built and put them on the table, but uh, you could easily put something inside there and make it look really good. Just to dirty things up a little more, I went back and stippled on some nutmeg and some uh, raw sienna just to add rusty effects to any of the kind of steel parts, including the antenna. And I guess I should do that top bit there. I also added a little bit of green just as some corrosion on the brass parts, that kind of a verdigris. You could also use more of a turquoise color uh, that might not have been the best color, but it's what I had. So, um, At this point, you could add a bit more staining. You could add some uh, like drips of moisture if you're in kind of a, a damp area. Um, my wasteland is a little dry, so we'll skip that step. I'm going to let this dry well, and then we'll hit it with some matte varnish later. But uh, I think that'll just about do it for now. All right, guys, there's our police station. At this point, it's still a canvas to do so much with. Um, you could still add a lot of graffiti or just glue other bits to the outside of this to make it a little more visually interesting. Uh, but it looks pretty good as is, I think. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I hope that it inspires you to make something fantastic, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.